My name is Deirdre Sidaway, Respiratory Nurse Specialist in Primary Care working in Ipswich, Suffolk and also a committee member with the Association of Respiratory Nurse Specialists. This is part two of a six part series when we're looking at the things that we must remember in order to provide a quality, structured asthma review. And this time we're going to look at assessing control. Patients often underestimate the severity of their symptoms. It's really important before the consultation starts that we review the medical records, have a look at which inhalers have been prescribed in the previous 12 months, how many relievers to how many inhaled steroids, and this should approximately be a ratio of one to two. Has the patient required prednisolone or been to out of hours or A&E or had to be admitted as a result of their asthma? This gives us a really good picture as to whether or not the patient's asthma is controlled from that aspect before we actually start asking questions. So the questions we should think about are the RCP3 questions. Has the patient had any symptoms of their asthma during the daytime or at night? And it's really important that we ensure patients understand the significance of nocturnal symptoms. Have they had problems with their asthma when they're taking activity? We should ask them about their salbutamol use because more use of salbutamol more than twice in a week is indicative of poor asthma control or more than four salbutamol inhalers in a year. Ask the patient how often they forget to use their preventer and whether they take their preventer when they're well. Use of questionnaires like the asthma control test can be really helpful and we send this questionnaire out to all patients in our practice to answer before they have their review with their invite letter and we've found that this has helped us to reduce the number of DNAs that we experience. Think about the AAA test and that stands for avoid asthma attacks and you can find this and patients can find this on the Asthma UK website. We should recall the patient's peak flow or spirometry and work out what that is as a percentage of their best or predicted. Ask the patient if the use of reliever medication eases symptoms because if it doesn't we really should be asking is it asthma causing these symptoms or is it something else? Could it maybe be reflux or dysfunctional breathing? Could there be medication that the patient is taking that's affecting their asthma or might they be suffering from sleep apnea? So in summary, check concordance, are they using the inhalers that we've prescribed? Look at the prescription records and see how many they've requested. Use the RCP three questions, day, night and activity, and consider if all of the symptoms are due to asthma.